guys. Yeah, I know it's a mess, but um, pretty much I got all the wires that I want sorted out and um, wrapped up. I will fish it from underneath and go up through here so I can meet up with these wires and then solder these together and then also solder the wires for here together. Then I have them leading down. Um, one wire will be going to the tactometer because um, this is a boost gauge and also a shift light. And then the second uh, or the other wires will be fed down underneath here where I will have to um, tap into this red ignition wire down here to find a good power source. And then underneath here again, there is um, right here where these brown wires are, there's a little nut um, where I can get a good ground source. Actually, that's a better view from here. So right here, this one. Right here is where I'll be getting my ground source from. And then um, after I fish those through, I also need to fish through the map sensor for the boost gauge, which I have right here. And this will sit right up underneath here because this seems like it's the best location for it. Um, also, I don't have to um, run anything other than a vacuum line outside. So that makes things simpler and easier, but also it keeps it away from the heat. Lastly, um, to install one of these gauges, the proper way to do it, which um, I spoke with my fabricator about, is to get one of these, which is a relay. And for this specific gauge, it needs a 30 amp relay. There we go. And this specific type of relay has a fuse built in. So it's a fusible relay, which makes things a lot simpler and easier. Guys, I'm back. As you can see, I've got the map sensor for the boost gauge fish through. And then I have all the wires that um, I will be wiring up the gauges to. Uh, fish through also. Um, gonna start lining them up and then soldering them. Um, pretty much I have a good amount of room down here. These will come down more once the gauge is in more but for the most part once I get them soldered in then I can fit this back up and put this screw this back up to the pillar. Um, I have this other wire yellow wire still hanging out because I'm not sure how long I want it yet because uh, that will be going over to where the O2 sensor is over here and I will be connecting a factory pigtail to it so I can just screw it into the O2 sensor connection and that will give the ECU the signal for the um, air and fuel ratio and back with a quick look, this is how I'm going to set up each of the wires. Uh, shrink wrap and connect these two wires here. And then I will solder them together and do that for each and every wire. Okay, so I got the first um, set of wires soldered up together and um, heat shrinked. So I'm going to wrap this up and then start on the next one. Okay, so... This is how it's gonna end up looking. I'm gonna finish soldering up on uh, the next side. Um, yeah, I went underneath here for the grounds, for um, the gauges and the relay, because they conveniently put that um, post for the grounds there. And right here, I'm tapping into the ignition wire. I'm gonna re-solder this back together with um, the fuse holder. Then I need to find more, one more wire for the accessory so it um, tells the relay to turn on. And then this last yellow wire will be connected to uh, these two red wires which go to both the boost and wideband gauge. Hey guys, well I'm almost done. Um, basically have like three more, four more wires to wire up. Um, just 
got to finish mounting the map sensor, uh, routing the cable for O2 sensor, but the gauge should power on now because everything's hooked up. Beautiful. Alright guys, I'm back and of course it's Thanksgiving. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this because um, I was trying to get an idea of how I was going to do this last night and I figured out it was actually pretty simple and easy. So for the wideband you have to get the cable through the firewall which um, BMW made your life a lot easy because they made the seal which um, has a wire harness for the ECU. So all you have to do is um, tug on this a little bit, um, pop the seal that goes um, seals the wire harness from the firewall front to the inside of the car, and then um, you take a screwdriver and you kind of um, like stick it through so you have enough spacing to um, get the bigger part of the connection through. And then you can use another screwdriver on top of that to give you a little bit more space. It's not going to damage anything because um, they make this tough um, covering for it. You still want to be careful. You don't want to um, like jab down into this because, again, um, if you have like a 25-year-old car like mine, you can still damage the wires just because they're old. So just take the screwdriver, push it through. gives you enough space to um, get the tip of the connector through. Take another screwdriver and um, actually pick at this piece because that helps a lot because um, this piece is pretty soft. Or you can use um, a needle nose pliers, but the screwdriver works pretty well. Um, so once you get it fished through, and then I have the bottom end that down there because that's where it will sit for now because I'm setting it up on the stock exhaust. You can come back inside here. And what you have to do is, um, there's a few pieces that you have to remove. So first you would um, drop down the uh, glove box. Then there's a little cover that goes up here. Two screws and then a couple of little small plastic clips. And then there's another side cover, which is right here. This goes up here on the side, covers up everything over here. And that has one screw and another um, set of plastic clips. So, so as you can see, once you get it through, then you're good. For me, I also have to wire in that yellow um, wire for the analog signal to the ECU. And instead of tapping into the original wire and having to mess with this, what I'm gonna do is just go straight through that um, same seal for the wiring harness and go out to the O2 sensor and find the correct wire and pin it to that so that makes my life a lot easier because i can connect it and disconnect it and then again i don't have to splice into this and mess up any wiring okay so as you can see the yellow wire fished through it's going to come back out through here and then um i have it set up so i can plug it in right here and that can go to the uh wire for the o2 sensor very important and when wiring this up easiest way is um to stay away from the rear section just follow the main harness and then come in the front because there is the steering column right here uh, you don't want to have anything in the way of that so you can zip tie it up here and then zip tie it over here that way there's no issues with the wire being cut or anything like that and then back here you want to make sure you zip tie it up because there is this heater line that goes out here and then this gets hot so if this wire is resting on that this will burn and you will lose your signal for the uh, wideband to the ECU so to prevent all these things just keep stuff like that in mind one thing I forgot to mention throughout the whole video um, while you're doing this you're going to want to disconnect the battery and have it on and off um, at certain times. You're going to want to check certain um, cables to see if they have power so you'll leave it on. But if you're fishing through wires or stuff like that, you don't want to disconnect the cable. And then I wanted to show the people that don't know how to fish a wire through something. 
basically um you just need a rod so a welding rod is what i'm using since my fabricator had that and that was the easiest thing to obtain but you can use a coat hanger welding rod works pretty nice because it's a lot thinner so it's easier to work with and it's longer and easier to bend so with fishing through a wire um, all you have to do is just take the wire put it up next to um the wire that you're using to um or in my case the welding rod that you're going to use to fish through the piece you tape it up and make sure it's taped up pretty good um, because the tape is going to hold friction um, between the, the wire and the sorry the welding wire and the wire that you're trying to fish through so once you do that then you can come back to the outside where you just have to pull and that is how you fish through wire so now instead of having to drill or cut or do any of that unnecessary extra mess um, all I have to do is just um, connect this wire up to the pigtail that I'm going to use and then when I'm ready to switch to the mega squirt and get my air and fuel reading I disconnect the original O2 sensor plug which is right here and what I will be doing is um, finding the specific wire um, that goes here um, that matches up with the pinout on the mega squirt ECU and I'm going to solder this yellow wire to the other pigtail that I have and then when I'm ready, I'll just connect the other one up to here with this yellow wire. And then that will give my Mega Square ECU um, the readings from the wideband. Basically what I have to do is test the continuity between the ECU and um, the harness that's out there. So I make sure that I'm connecting to the right um, wire. I was pretty sure that it would be the yellow wire out here, but I just still wanted to double check so I didn't fry my ECU. So. There goes the yellow wire, which is the O2 sensor input wire. And then um, basically you see that this shows one. I want to connect back here. It shows zero point, um, zero, zero point 0.5 or 6. And again here at the yellow wire, or the gray wire, sorry. Again, it does the same. That means that I have continuity between this wire, which is the number 71 on the pinout, and the wire that's out here for the O2 sensor signal. Okay, so I'm almost done. Um, zip tied all the connections and stuff up here. Still need to mount the uh, map sensor. Uh, cleaned up everything in here. I uh, had to poke a couple holes and um, drill a hole in that plastic piece so the wires for the um, gauge sorry, um, didn't touch the heater pipes so I drilled a hole in that little plastic piece so I can get a zip tie in there, some more, and then went right underneath the steering column. That's the easiest and safest spot to put it without um, getting anything damaged. So now I'm going to do the fresh air calibration and install the O2 sensor. I want to show you guys really quickly that's where the O2 sensor for the wideband will sit. I had my fabricator just weld that bung on for me um, so that I can reuse the stock O2 sensor when I'm going to run the stock ECU and then once I fully learn how to tune then I can leave it disconnected and then just run the, um, the wideband. The guys got everything wired back up, set it back up with um, electrical tape. Uh, wide band sensors going down there. Nice, nice, nice. Alright guys, getting ready to do the first startup with the wide band installed. try to smoothen out the idle a little bit more and then I'll be back all right guys so I messed around with the um, idle air control valve and the fuel table a little bit and 
realize that at about 13, around mid 13s is where the car idles the best. So um, it's a start, but it's going pretty well now. So got it idling around um, around the nines for idle. Sounds pretty good. All right, guys, another quick video to show you the mix where it's out. Switch back to the original um, L2 sensor plug on the outside, and I'm gonna see what the car actually runs at with the stock computer. Let this um, warm up really quick. around a bit but now that I can see that it likes 14 pretty much I know that from what I was doing earlier I'm actually in a pretty good range of what the stock ECU likes to do with the car so it seems like if I bring it up to around 13.5 and 13 that should be a good setting for the ECU because again um, this ECU just has a uh, stock EEPROM chip, or not a stock EEPROM chip, just a aftermarket EEPROM chip, so it's not going to do as well as it should, but for the most part it does idle smooth with the chip, so I think I'm going to stick with trying to keep the tune around 13, 13.5. 